My name is Michael Levitt. I'm at Stanford School of Medicine. I've been there for more than 30 years. Uh, and I have decided that one way in which I can help people understand what's going on is by making a set of short uh, videos that explain different important aspects of uh, viral growth. So why do we want to care about exponential growth? The reason is that people believe, perhaps for good reason, that epidemics grow exponentially. So how are we going to have an imagined group of people? Blue means they're unaffected. We're going to then have an infection start at one place, and we're going to watch how the infection spreads. So we start the infection. This person is the first case. On day one, we have one new case and one total cases. And here we're plotting what the results are going to look like. On day two, this one person has infected two people, and that's it. Then on the next day, these two each infect two. So now we're up to four new cases and seven in total. On day four, each of these four infect two more. So we have eight altogether and 15 in total. And on day five, we now have 16 new cases, these light pink cases around the edge and 31 in total. Now, this growth is in fact exponential. But if you think about it, it isn't that easy to have exponential growth. In a close situation like this, for example, if we went on one more day, there's no way that this person can infect anybody because he has no neighbors that are uninfected. Now, this is one area, this might be one small village, but there could be another area which is distant from it, and we have no people who are communicating from here to here, so there's no reason why this village should become infected. Another option would be this situation, another village here, where there's in fact a chain of people who travel from one to the other, and you can see that it's not easy to grow exponentially inside a closed environment, but if you allow a lot of mixing, then you can get exponential growth. Now let's just look at the mathematics of exponential growth. And the first thing I want to do is show you something called scales, linear scale and later log scale. This is a normal graph, but on this axis, we just simply have the number of cases up to 120,000. And over here we have dates, a 12 week period. We're gonna start the growth. It actually started, but you don't see anything. It's a tiny bit of lifting up. This is all pure exponential growth. But exponential growth often starts very slowly. Now it's speeding up, going much faster, and next time we're through the roof. So basically, going from here to here in a two-week period, we've gone from a small number of cases to a very large number of cases, a very, very scary situation. Now, when you want to see things where you have small numbers over here and large numbers over here, the best way to see them is not to use a linear scale, but to use a log scale. So here we have a log scale, it looks the same, dates are the same on the bottom, but here on the y-axis, we actually have numbers that go from one to 10, 10 to 100, 100 to 1,000. So now we're going to do exactly the same numbers, exponential growth on this curve. Wow, we see a straight line. Exponential curves are defined as lines that are absolutely straight on a log linear plot. Keep on going and we're through the roof. Although we only saw a large increase in number of cases in this region, we were still seeing cases, and these cases were very important because they were growing exponentially. Now, this situation is really scary. Uh, we've seen that we got up to a million cases in less than seven weeks, but in reality, uh, exponential growth doesn't always keep on going. Something stops it. So let's just simply make an idea where we're gonna artificially stop the exponential growth. We're playing a line here saying you cannot cross the line at 100,000. So what is this going to look like? Things are growing slowly, start to go up, go very fast, but as it gets to the line, it stops. Now this is sort of what we saw before, but it's much more interesting on not the linear scale, but the log scale. So these are the two kinds of exponential growth, either unrestricted or unlimited exponential growth, or exponential growth that flattens. What we're seeing here is the flattening of the curve. Let's look at the properties of these curves. Well, one property is just the number of cases. It increases as a straight line. Another property is the slope of this line. And this is a straight line. And as all of you might remember from school, straight lines have a fixed slope. So we're going to draw the slope in blue and it's fixed. We also cannot calculate from this the number of new cases shown in red. And that is basically shown here. Initially, there are very few new cases, but as this curve goes, higher and higher, it shoots up exponentially. Now, in a situation like this, we basically have a pretty dire doomsday situation. 
um, by seven weeks, we've reached a million cases and we're having 1,500 new cases every day and likely a good deal of death. Now, let's see what happens when we do exactly the same thing for the exponential function that's been limited. Again, the number of new cases shown on this axis goes up, but as soon as we start to flatten the curve, the number of new cases hits a maximum and it comes crashing down. So this starts to look much more like what we're seeing in real epidemics. I want to end this section with a conclusion. Pure exponential growth is a terrifying phenomenon. Limited exponential growth is much less frightening. The trouble is, is we don't really know it's limiting and epidemics may or may not grow exponentially.